And it's not just here, it's everywhere. Every plant that you start to research, you can find all the beneficial aspects of them and how you can actually use them, even if they just look like weeds. Hi, I'm Scarlett and I'm starting a permaculture project here on the east coast of Mallorca. Follow along as I document the whole process of transforming this derelict piece of land into a food forest. Hello, I'm back on my way to the property once again today with the special mission which is to identify all the plants that we have uh, right now and basically to learn more about them because I'm new to this uh, Mediterranean climate and all the plants here are different to uh, where I'm from which is uh, completely different and very temperate very wet climate so there is a lot I have to learn and a lot I already have learned and that I want to share with you guys. Okay, so let's talk about the vegetation here on Mallorca. Originally, the whole island was covered with a nice and dense Mediterranean forest, but then people started chopping wood and mostly to build their own houses and boats. Unfortunately, most of that forest is gone today, but at least the Romans brought a couple of nice fruit trees and olives and almonds to replace the forest with some edible trees that are still alive today. I have been researching about the different types of vegetation that you can find here in the Mediterranean and especially on Mallorca and I found out that there are four main categories. The first category is the pine forest. It still exists in some places and 70% of the trees are um, actually the Aleppo pine, which is probably the one that you see behind me. I am not quite sure because there was um, some kind of um, translation mistake I made because in German we only call the pine trees pine trees the ones with the, um, the little pines you can buy at the store while we call all the other pine trees kiefer so i just assumed this was like a pine trees uh, with pine so the pineo pinea But I did my research, so now I'm pretty sure that these probably are the Aleppo pine uh, because they're predominant on the island. Besides the pine trees, you can also find home oaks in the forest of Mallorca. Their undergrowth consists of buckhorn species, clematis and strawberry trees. One of my new favorite species so far. So I might add some um, other pine species to complement this forest and also oak trees because on this property there are no oak trees at all. The second category is called Macchia, which um, actually developed in the areas where there used to be a forest, but uh, due to um, deforestation all that has been left is a bunch of very very hardy shrubs and very low trees and uh, that's what is most dominant here on this property and it's also 
the, that kind of vegetation where you often see uh, goats or sheep um, grazing in between and just eat whatever is still alive. The good thing about the Machia vegetation is that you, it has great potential to become a forest once again. And so this is kind of um, the plan I, I have for this property. The most dominant species on the Machia vegetation are the mastix, which is these green bushes you can see all over. As well as some lower bushes like the rock rose or uh, wild olives. The third category is the Garriga, which is a bit more rocky and dry and you can see it mostly in the north or northeast of the island. For me it's the most beautiful of all the vegetations and probably the vegetation why I fell in love with this island because it's just so quiet and so wild and um, the colors are just amazing. And the last category is called huerta, which is uh, more of a cultivated um, vegetation with a lot of fruit trees, nut trees, olive trees, as well as all the vegetable gardens, uh, especially in the middle of the island. I am lucky enough to have a bunch of almond trees and also carob trees. So this property is a mix between huerta and the macchia vegetation. But since it hasn't been cared for quite a while, it resembles much more um, of a wild macchia. In order to plan what I'm going to plant in my food forest, I had to, of course, first um, see what's already there and also what I could possibly use and what um, plants that need to uh, move or I need to uh, be aware of their um, invasive nature. To my surprise, most of the plants growing here are edible or have some medicinal use, which is just incredible and it's just such a shame that most people probably don't know about this. Um, and it's not just here, it's everywhere. Every plant that you start to research, you can find all the beneficial aspects of them and how you can actually use them, even if they just look like weeds. But um, let's start talking about the plants from um, top to bottom. So let's take a closer look at the plants I found on this property. Since I'm going to convert this place into a food forest, the easiest way to categorize them is by their size. Because in a forest you have all the different layers of vegetation, from tall canopy trees to ground cover. And in a food forest we're imitating this dense vegetation with edible species. The tallest plants I have here is the pine tree. All the trees that are growing here produce some kind of yield. They have edible fruits or medicinal uses. There are numerous almond trees, a couple of carobs, some olives and two or three figs. And then we have a variety of bushes and shrubs, um, such as this uh, oleastre, which is like a wild olive variety. Along with the mastic tree, which can be cultivated for its aromic resin and the Montpellier rock rose, it is the plant that occurs most numerously.
The ground cover was more difficult to identify. Big parts are covered with the edible buttercup oxalis that has a sour taste and is blooming beautifully at the moment. I am very curious to taste the first young shoots of the wild asparagus. The asphodel seems to be indestructible and quite invasive, but some traditional folk usages of the plant have been to make glue from the plant's root, so I might try that. With some of the plants I wasn't quite sure. Can you help me identify the following plants? If you know more than I do, please let me know in the comments below. So, what's going to happen to all the plants that are here at the moment, once I start um, with my food forest? Well, um, of course, all the edible trees and shrubs and ground cover, they will all stay, because they're edible. And they're already here, so I know they grow here well, which um, is a huge benefit. But then I will just make it much more dense. So I will be adding different fruit trees and also native plants within the mix and just increase the diversity and uh, make sure that there is enough to eat, not just for me, but also for all the wild animals and insects living here with me. As you might be able to tell, I am very fascinated about all the plants growing here and very excited as well to be able to start taking care of them so they will eventually be taking care of me. Coming from a completely different climate, this might be even more exciting and I am learning so much and uh, I would love to take you with me and to learn with me. So if you want to learn more about the vegetation here in the Mediterranean or especially on Mallorca and want to see what I will be doing of this property, make sure to hit the subscribe button and we'll see each other in the next video.